My first price target for Casper in 2025 is one dollar, and of course, that's all financial advice, and that's not a guarantee. But as like my worst case price target scenario, I don't see why this is so bad at all. Because after all, I believe that Casper is arguably one of the best layer one blockchains out there. Now, when I say this, it may ruffle some feathers because people may think, "Whoa, isn't Ethereum better than Casper?" No, I completely disagree because the way I take a look at Ethereum is like Denny's, you know. The restaurant, there's a lot of branches. Yes, it has a lot of fans. You know, a lot of people like it. But is it really better than Sizzler? No, I don't think so. I think Sizzler tastes better. I think it's more wonderful. And I believe that is exactly what Casper is. It's like Sizzler. Ethereum is like Denny's. Ethereum has sky high gas fees, which I think is complete caca. It's also arguably not even scalable. But if you take a look at Casper, lightning fast, and it's very scalable and doesn't suffer from gas fee nonsense and i really love that you know i think it's a lot better again than something like ethereum furthermore casper has flexible deployment options it can easily transition between a private a public and a hybrid network so yeah that's how amazing they are not to mention when it comes to casper it's even focused on ai now some people may think that oh wow this market is done it's only hype all this type of stuff while I can't deny the fact that, you know, a lot of the hype did die down as of late, I think better days are ahead because even if you take a look at Grandview Research, they do predict that the AI market is predicted to be worth nearly $2 trillion by 2030. So that's crazy right there. I mean, that's bigger than some countries' GDP. And just to put some context into this, if you take a look at the GDP of Canada back in 2022, that was around $2 trillion. So yeah, when it comes to AI, man, it can't be denied that there's still a lot of room to grow when it comes to that. I think Casper pretty much ticks all the boxes for what a layer one blockchain is supposed to be in this day and age because people oftentimes prefer something that is focused on AI. Again, Casper is something with low gas fees, which again, you know, it has that feature. And also on top of that, it's also very scalable. So yeah, this is how amazing Casper is. Now, granted, when it comes to something like Ethereum, there are Ethereum layer twos out there that quite essentially, you know, removes all of Ethereum's nonsense while at the same time allowing for it to be enjoyed quite essentially but still i think that that's kind of nonsense in my opinion you know ethereum as a standalone layer one blockchain i just don't think again it's better than casper and even despite casper having an ecosystem that's nowhere near as impressive even despite not having that many fans i just think it has a higher ceiling because for instance if i want to build a project why would i choose some place like an ethereum now i get it if i want to make a meme coin and i want fans and hype i could choose that But if let's say I'm just purely looking for a project that I want to perform very well and have good features, hands down, I would choose something like Casper over Ethereum. You know, that's just the way I view it. It's really a no-brainer pick for me. I don't want to deal with that crazy nonsense. But also on top of that, if you take a look at Casper, it's focused on enterprise adoption. And the fantastic thing about it is that it's actually built from the ground up to be focused on enterprise adoption. A lot of other projects out there, initially they're focused on the retail market, and now they're beginning to switch their focus towards enterprises but you know that's kind of weird because usually the foundation isn't really there you know it's much better you know building a foundation for a 10-story building if you actually want to build a 10-story building right a lot of these other competitors they feel like they built their foundation for like a two-story building and they want to build like an eight-story building yeah it doesn't work that way in my opinion when it comes to casper you know I think it has the amazing features that enterprises want to look for again amazing scalability right fast transaction speeds This is what they like. And keep in mind, you know, being focused on enterprises isn't some sort of random nonsense, because if you take a look at it, even historically speaking, what fosters the growth of the internet? It was enterprise adoption. You know, they have the capital, they have the resources, and they have the volume in order to do something like that. So when it comes to the world of blockchain technology, I don't see why it would be any different. You know, I think once enterprises really start adopting Casper, once they look into it, I think it really is going to showcase just how special Casper is, but it's going to take some time and I really can't wait. And even though, let's say, like around a year from right now, enterprises don't fully adopt Casper, you know, because of course it does take some time, you know, even despite that, I still think that even the anticipation for that could bring a lot of hype for Casper because once people understand just how amazing these enterprise optimized projects are, it could really gain a lot of attention when it comes to Casper. I get it. The price of Casper as of right now is low. It hasn't performed well at all, actually, ever since I started talking about it. But in my opinion, man, the future could look very different from the past. Because granted, right, 
you know, when it comes to Casper, sentiment isn't the best, but I think better days are ahead because imagine, right? Once that FOMO really kicks in, that buying pressure, that buying volume, people are going to pay attention to something like Casper because as of right now, Casper hasn't really popped off yet. If you really think about it, right? Everyone as of right now is paying attention to like, you know, a Solana, an Avalanche, an Ethereum, but are they really paying attention to something like Casper? Not really. However, here's the thing. You also take a look at what happened to Shiba Inu and Dogecoin, right? Back then, everyone pretty much focused on that. But then eventually people moved on and started looking into, hey, you know, what meme coins could potentially be the next big thing? And then that's when we saw, you know, Book of Meme, Pepe, Dog with Hat really rise. So I do believe that once the hype for Layer 1 blockchain steps back in again, people are going to take a look at, you know, again, Solana, you know, the big dog, so to speak. And they're going to say, hey, you know, what could be the next big thing? I think they're going to potentially take a look at something like Casper because, again, it's relatively low. It really hasn't had you know, that massive bull run yet, like a Solana or an Avalanche. So I really do believe it's a sleeping giant. So I think that kind of the low position of Casper as of right now is actually going to benefit it in a sense, even though it may seem counterintuitive. You know, again, people usually want to look for the next big thing. So when it comes to Casper being sort of low as of right now, I don't think it's bad at all. And also another added bonus is the fact that I can actually accumulate more Casper. So yeah, it's not caca by any means not financial advice, of course, but I really do believe that Casper has a bright future and it's not like it's doing bad at all. There's currently over 100 projects, you know, on its ecosystem. So yeah, it's not doing bad again whatsoever. Adoption is okay. I'm not going to say it's the best, but hey, it's heading up there. And also on top of that, you know, you take a look at the partnerships that Casper often announces that could very well just be a small glimpse of what the reality is because a lot of their partnerships allegedly are under a non-disclosure agreement. You could only imagine what they reveal right now. You know, that could very well, again, just be a small glimpse of what is going on behind the scenes. So when it comes to Casper, I think it's very fantastic from top to bottom. I think it's so wonderful. And a dollar, really, I don't think it's crazy at all. You know, if Casper were to go to the price of a dollar, considering current circulating supply, market cap would only be around, you know, $12.5 billion. So yeah, it's not bad at all. I mean, come on, man. We've seen BNB reach over $100 billion of market cap. Could you imagine that? We've also seen Dogecoin reach over $80 billion. This is like peanuts in the grand scheme of things, especially for something this amazing. And keep in mind, $1. You know, some people are like, oh, is that like a 10x? No, man. Keep in mind, $1 is currently over an 80x from here. You can only imagine that. That's insane. You know, Casper is really giving me Cardano vibes because Cardano, you know, it's native token called ADA for the longest time possible, was just kind of hovering a couple cents. And then boom, in 2021, it just absolutely skyrocketed to a whole different dimension. Now, at that time, people didn't really think about, you know, ADA, right? And typically, people don't really think about it until it does well. But for me, I don't need confirmation in order to know that Casper is going to do well, hypothetically, because a lot of people like to ask me, why don't you wait for Casper to go to the price of 10 cents, you know, 50 cents before you try to, you know, get into Casper. No, man. I mean, could you imagine as of right now, if I just waited until Casper went to the price of like 20 cents or 50 cents before I got in? Oh, man. Could you imagine the hypothetical gains lost there? I'm not going to do that, man. I'm going to believe in Casper right now because I don't want to FOMO in later on. You know, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to FOMO in right now. Not financial advice, but again, Casper at the price of a dollar wouldn't surprise me whatsoever during this bull run. And as my first price target, I don't see why it's crazy at all. Now, my second price target for Casper is $1.50. Now, again, people may think this is crazy or whatever, but no, I disagree because even if we take a look at, again, the market cap it would have at that point, considering current circulating supply would be around $18.5 billion. That, again, is really peanuts. That's not even 50% of Shiba Inu's all-time high market cap. Keep in mind, that's not a joke. You know, Shiba Inu at one point reached out $40 billion of market cap. Now, granted, Casper doesn't have the fans or hype like a Shiba Inu. But again, it's an enterprise-grade layer one blockchain that's focused on AI. I mean, come on, man. Is Shiba Inu focused on that type of stuff? You got to think about that. Now, granted, it's a meme coin. I understand that. It's not supposed to be revolutionary. But, you know, come on. Casper can't go to over 50% less than its peak. I just think this is easy peasy, hypothetically speaking, not financial advice, of course. You know, also, if you think about it, Dogecoin, again, reached over $80 billion in market cap. It's like, way more than this. I think when it comes to Casper in the grand scheme of things, you know, it reaching the price of a dollar fifty cents, you know, a dollar, it doesn't require this crazy market cap, right? Because other projects out there, 
in order to reach like the price of a dollar or two dollars, they need like a market cap of like 500 billion, 700 billion. That's not the case here. And even historically speaking, we've seen something like BNB reach again over $100 billion in market cap. And even just last year, slightly over 2% of the crypto hacks that happened actually occurred on the BNB smart chain ecosystem. That's not great. The crypto space overall is massive. So if BNB can reach over $100 billion, especially back in 2021, at a time where there was far less crypto owners, far less institutional adoption, far less, you know, enterprise investors, you know, it could do that. Imagine what Casper can do this time around. You know, again, it doesn't need to reach a $100 billion market cap to do well, just going to the price of $1.50 and going to around an $18.5 billion market cap that's already around a 125x from here. Could you imagine that? Even if Casper never reaches the heights that a BNB reached, a Dogecoin, a SHIB, just even a glimpse of that is already hypothetically very amazing. I mean, again, $1.50, around a 125x from here, caralho, oha, can you imagine the hypothetical room for growth there. Of course, you know, no one has to follow what I'm saying, but that's not financial advice. But again, when I take a look at that, I'm just like, man, I can't believe Casper is this low. But yeah, besides that point, my third and final price target for Casper is, of course, Casper at the price of $2, which people may think that, yeah, this is, you know, not realistic, right? This is trash, all this type of stuff. But I think this born could be so special. You know, you have to consider how There's currently over 600 million crypto owners, according to Crypto.com research. Practically double the amount that we saw during the peak of the 2021 bull run. So could you only imagine that, right? Also, you take a look at the Bitcoin ETF, you know, the number of institutional investors, enterprise adoption, it's just through the roof. I think with all those amazing factors, it could very well create a perfect recipe for success. You know, I think Bitcoin could hypothetically go to the price of at least $150,000 during this bull run. That's just my opinion, even though it reached a new all-time high this year had a big pullback, having a decent recovery. But as of right now, the crypto space is having, you know, again, a pullback. But I think better days are ahead because as of right now, things may not be looking the best, but six months from right now, a year from right now, I think things could look so different. That's why I'm staying patient. And I think as Bitcoin does reach those great heights, I think it's only fair to assume that altcoins are going to go along with the ride, much like Casper. At that point, you know, $2 wouldn't surprise me whatsoever. And now, how long does this type of stuff usually take? Typically, altcoins, they've been known to peak as a worst case scenario around 18 months after a Bitcoin halving event, which would actually mean around October of 2025. And now why is that the case? It's because the last Bitcoin halving event happened back in April. Of course, this year is 2024. But again, around 18 months from then is October of next year. So that is historically a worst case. Now, could it happen sooner? Absolutely. But in my opinion, You know, sometime in 2025 is hypothetically when something like Casper could truly shine and as well as a lot of other altcoins and as well as Bitcoin. So I'm staying patient. And that's why, again, I tell this video, 2025 price targets. But even besides that, what is my buying strategy? My buying strategy is dollar cost averaging. I believe that is about as simple as it gets, really, because that literally doesn't require like any skill whatsoever, because a lot of people out there, they want to day trade, they want to use leverage, they want to swing trade. First of all, that requires a lot of knowledge. And also on top of that, a lot of people that I know that have been, you know, doing that for years, they haven't really have anything to show for, you know, a lot of them just keep losing. So yeah, I don't want to do that, man. You know, could some people do it, I guess, hypothetically, but I haven't really seen it. So yeah, I don't want to dabble with that type of stuff. You know, dollar cost averaging, the way I take a look at it, it's like literally boiling an egg or like, you know, cooking fried eggs or like cooking instant noodles. It literally doesn't get any easier than that. I'm not talking about cooking like five-star pasta or like, you know, filet mignon or beef wellington. I'm not talking about this, right? I'm literally talking about just basic cookie cutter stuff because through dollar cost averaging, it's literally anytime I acquire income, I acquire Casper, I hold and I just wait. That's it. It's so simple. But of course, no one has to follow my strategy. It's not financial advice, but that's what I do because if the price of Casper dips, which it did, you know, relatively speaking, when compared to months ago, you know, it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things because I'm still able to acquire some more because I never went all in. But on the flip side, once Casper does pump, you know, I'm not going to miss out on it because I didn't sell. I wasn't day trading. I wasn't waiting for a specific moment to go all in. So then I'm protecting myself from both, you know, situations quite essentially. It dips, I can acquire, but then let's say it pumps. It's great. So either way, I feel like it's not a bad situation. Not financial advice, of course, but that's just my strategy. And again, Casper, the price of $2 during this run. That wouldn't surprise me whatsoever. I think this boron could be so amazing. And I think Casper 
is a hidden gem. I think it's arguably one of the best layer one blockchains out there. And make sure to subscribe if you gain value from this video. I'd greatly appreciate it. It's Melee the Captain. I'll catch y'all on the next one. I'm out. Peace. Bye.